Well, welcome to the show. Technology has made it easier for us to connect, communicate, and socialize. But the problem with these things, all these adventures, advances can also be damaging. As it has introduced phrases such as Crackberry and iPad Envy to the English language. Yeah, just one. I'll be there in five. Well, joining us now is author and counselor, Dr. Gregory Jans. Greg, thanks for being with us. Oh, good to be with you. This is an important topic. It is. You, you've, you've made a provocative statement in your book, um, Hook, The Pitfalls of Media Technology and Social Networking, where you tell us that smartphones are kind of like LSD. What do you mean by that? By that? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we're seeing more and more folks who truly are addicted to technology. 75% of the folks we work with cannot put down their device for one day without checking it. And we're finding people with true anxiety disorder. By that, what I mean is uh, they get physical symptoms if they can't get to their device. Um, I'll tell you a story of one of my friends where I, I sort of secretly took his smartphone and, and, and he literally, he started to get all kinds of anxiety because he couldn't yes. find it. Um, and it, it was it was kind of odd. And the more he got distressed, you know, it, it was it was just a space of about 90 seconds <laughs> and he couldn't find it. And uh, I, I, I gave it back to him. He, he didn't talk to me for a while after that. Um, why, why do we get addicted to it? Why, why do we have feelings of anxiety if, if we can't find our phone or go for a period of time without checking our email? You know, Gordon, that's a great question. And one of the reasons is we actually find ourselves um, addicted in a sense that because we live in a one-click society, so everything is instant, and the technology teaches us to have what I call low impulse control. We actually uh, have trouble controlling our impulses. That said, uh, one of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to balance technology in our lives. But my concern is even what we're modeling for our kids. 
Um, there's a new study coming out of Stanford about uh, how young men today, because they're spending so many, so much, so many hours doing video games, um, yes. and frankly, so many hours watching internet porn, that their ability to, to interact with females is at risk now. Are, are you familiar with that? I am familiar with that. And one of the things that we see is uh, for people that develop primarily virtual relationships, really not true on or true re real relationships, they don't go through the normal relationship stages. And so, you know, online, of course, on Facebook or I mean, I look perfect online. Remember, we always present our very best. So that said, uh, we find ourselves uh, more and more moving towards these virtual relationships, which many times take us where we don't really want to go. The average age of exposure to pornography on the internet is actually 11 years old. That is, um, that's a shock. I didn't know that stat. Yes. Um, I've heard it's as high as 50% of males, 25% of females have, have a problem with online pornography. When, and the numbers are just and, getting kind that of... Is, that is growing, yes. I mean, it's really starting to get staggering and, and it's... and. There's an addiction there, too, that's even separate from the whole technology addiction. Um, Absolutely. Why, why do... I, I've noticed a phenomenon um, where texting seems to be taking over for conversation, where literally <laughs> you'll have people in the same room texting each other as opposed to talking. Uh, are, are we okay. fundamentally changing uh, our social interactions as a culture? Oh my goodness, I must tell you from personal experience, I have two boys. I knew I had a problem when at the dinner table they're texting back and forth to each other. <laughs> yes, and you know, our young people don't use a cell phone to make phone calls, they use a cell phone uh, for texting. I called my son the other day and he didn't answer, but then he texts me back and said, Dad, what do you want? <laughs> so, and the texting has its own unique language as well. And, uh, you know, if you don't know the language uh, of texting, it's, it's, there's a generation gap there. Your book also points out that there, there's another factor here, that it, uh, the technology is actually increasing stress, uh, increasing anxiety uh, for us. Um, how, how does that happen? Well, the stress and anxiety, one of the things that happens, Gordon, is we find ourselves, here's my, here's my smartphone right here, we find ourselves, if we can't get to this thing, and, and it creates these physical symptoms of anxiety, how this develops is um, we keep this with us. I have uh, uh, clients who come to see us. They actually sleep with their smartphone, with their device, because they don't want to miss the text. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I would say. That's a problem. Uh, what can we do to get back to, uh, what, I guess, old-fashioned um, connections, old-fashioned conversation, uh, you know, real interpersonal uh, connecting uh, with another person? How can we get there? One of the things I want to make sure that we're doing is that we are actually spending more time with our real relationships in person versus our virtual relationships. And one of the things you might want to try is take one day, maybe it's going to be Sunday, and do a technology detox. Take that day and just set it aside and, and don't involve yourself with technology for one day. See how you feel. See if there's physical symptoms. See how you, you feel emotionally. Do you feel disconnected? But allow that uh, just as a, as a place of starting. One of the things I want you to do is when you're with people, really be with them. Don't be, you know, have you ever been with somebody and they're, they're texting away here at their device and uh, they look up and they go, what'd you say? <laughs> I'm, be fully present in reality w with relationships. No more multitasking. All right, good, good <laughs> tips. Thank you. If you'd like to find out more about Greg's work, you can go to 700clubinteractive.com and his book, Hooked, is available wherever books are sold. And thanks for being with us today. Good to be today. Thank you, Gordon.